Hello my lovelies, I'm Chris from Techspert and today, well, get your spare pair of pants on standby because we're checking out a budget-friendly gaming smartphone, the Infinix GT10 Pro. Which means, yes, your Uncle Spurt will be getting sniped in the face by damn dirty 12-year-olds over and over again in the Battle Royales. For this game and phone, Infinix has gone with the rather optimistic tagline of Outplay the Rest. Clearly they've never seen my mad Call of Duty skills. Frankly, I would need about a dozen cheat codes and for somebody good to rip the phone out of my hands and play for me to stand half a chance against anybody else. So let's do an Infinix GT10 Pro unboxing and thoroughly test out those gaming smarts. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. No oh, shit. So what do you get inside of that lovely box besides the Infinix GT10 Pro? Well, you've also got an Infinix 45 watt power adapter, an extremely orange USB cable. Looks like the thing's been tangled. How's that for a reference that only British people of a certain age will actually get? And Infinix has also chucked in a cheap pair of earphones. They look like proper ear gouges, but they are 3.5 mil, which means, oh yes, headphone jack, baby. And you've also got yourself a cleaning kit, a screen protector, and a bundled condom case. And as if that wasn't already a generous enough bounty of a box, apparently the box itself actually turns into some sort of smartphone speaker stand. So let's give that a whirl. Right, let's see if I can actually follow these basic instructions. And boom, there you have it, set up and in action. Probably best suited to TikToks, I'm guessing. Anyway, whatever. So the Infinix GT10 Pro ain't your typical gaming phone. The 6.67 inch weighs just 187 grams, which is pretty lightweight for a gamer. However, it is quite obvious once you flip it over and gaze adoringly at that rather mental arse that yes, it is indeed a gaming blower. This is Infinix's cyber mecha design, apparently influenced by cyberpunk. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was influenced by a suitcase full of Class A's. You got a choice of two different colors with the Infinix GT10 Pro, either cyber black or mirage silver. And I don't know if it's just the fact that I haven't slept in almost 24 hours, but I actually kind of like it. It'll certainly get you some glances if you whip it out on the tube or the bus or whatever. The branding is reasonably subtle, it's not in your face. Unlike the actual design itself, of course. This wee little strip of LEDs right here, that can be used as a notifications light, or you can just have it flashing while you're gaming to attract even more attention. And this is fully customizable in the GT10 Pro's settings. You have a small selection of different effects you can choose between. And the Infinix GT10 Pro is actually reasonably skinny, again for a gaming smartphone, just a Nats pube over 8 mils thick. And as you can see, that camera bump doesn't jut too far from the back end but not the most comfortable to clutch because it is an iPhone-style flat-edge effort. Reasonably slender bezels surrounded that mighty 6.67-inch display, so no added girth. Anyway, let's have a wee gander at the software, and what you've got here is Android 13, but you do have Infinix's own XOS launcher slapped on top of that. How many software updates am I likely to get for this bad boy? I hear you cry. Well, I wouldn't bet on too many. And yeah, this does change up the general vibe of Android quite a bit. You've got the usual stuff like the apps tray, but for instance, if you drag down from the top, you've got a control center as well as a notifications bar, similar to the likes of MIUI. You can use a little more color just to make everything more instantly recognizable. And if you swipe this away, you don't have the Google feed. What you've got is basically a whole bunch of widgets, including a good bit of cliched mantra action, which changes every time you swipe across. I reckon that anyone who's actually been stabbed by a sword would say that that's total bull****. This one's my particular favourite. Where there are flowers blooming, there is hope. Or much more likely, just cow s***. But XOS also has its upside. So for instance, you get a greater customization than you do in bog standard Android. Lots of different always on display options, for instance. You can create your own themes, etc. Loads of other bonus bits, including the game mode, which we will check out later, of course. And you know what, kudos to Infinix because there's bugger all crapware on here. You've got a couple of XOS bits like the X Arena and the X Club, but no Booking.com, no LinkedIn, no Facebook. Now that's the kind of world I want to live in. And the Infinix GT10 Pro boasts a pretty generous amount of storage, 256 gigs, more than what you'd get on the base iPhone, which costs considerably more. And even better, it is actually bloody expandable via micro SD, which is becoming increasingly rare. And then when you want to get gaming, you'll want to give X Arena a wee tap. And this is basically a gaming hub. 
Got fast access to all of your installed titles in here and also the Darlink engine, which is basically just a whole bunch of gaming features. So you can hide notifications, increase the footstep sound, very handy in games like PUBG and Free Fire where you have to shoot other humans in the face before they shoot you. Piddle about with the graphics style, not that it makes a massive amount of difference to be perfectly honest. And then when you're ready to kick some ass slash be absolutely ritually humiliated, just hit start. Now at any point while you're gaming, you can drag out the in-game toolbar just by pulling a finger from the sides here and just leaving it until the icon turns into a Wii gamepad. This gives you fast access to most of Infinix's gaming tools. So for instance, you can choose between three different performance modes. You can clean up the memory, record the action if you want to. You've got notifications, blocking. The gaming temperature control is a good one as well. If the phone starts to get really toasty, then it can limit the frame rate. Just dial down the performance a bit in order to calm things down. And you can also, if you want to, use the volume rocker as a sort of trigger button. Both the volume plus and the volume minus. Just drag that icon about to any on-screen button and it will perform that action. Like so. Although I've got to admit, I didn't really bother to use this myself as I just found it kind of awkward. The trigger buttons really need to be right here at the edges and not, you know, part of one rocker thing. Now the Infinix GT10 Pro sports a mighty 6.67 inch AMOLED display, giving you a good view of whatever action you're busy chucking yourself into. It's a full HD plus resolution panel, so those visuals are reasonably crisp. And because it's an AMOLED display, you get poppy colors, nice sharp contrast as well, nice deep blacks, clean whites, overall very attractive stuff. There is a dinky wee selfie cam orifice up towards the top end of the display, centrally positioned, but thankfully I didn't find this intruded on the action at all when I was gaming. I'm probably just so bloody used to the things by now. And while this isn't the brightest smartphone screen in the world, not even quite hitting a thousand nits on peak brightness, I found I didn't struggle when I was gaming, even in quite a brightly lit environment. But if you are going to be playing outdoors in direct sunlight, you're probably going to struggle if you're trying to play a murky affair. Certainly good luck spotting any sneaky sniper gits in Free Fire. Now refresh rate maxes out at 120Hz. You do actually have a high frame rate mode in the likes of Free Fire as well. To really take advantage of that fast display. And I had absolutely no problems whatsoever with the screen responsiveness. You got 360Hz touch sampling. So no real lag when you are prodding, poking and swiping that mighty panel. And you've got a stereo speaker set up here on the Infinix GT10 Pro as well, which I will demonstrate using my own crappy YouTube videos rather than any gaming stuff in case I get a copyright strike. Uncle Spurt needs his whiskey money. But it's securely lodged inside of my lugs, no matter how ferociously my head was vibrating. And just to prove how good that fit is, mosh test. So they certainly ain't the loudest speakers around, that's for sure, but they're perfectly fine again for gaming in a reasonably quiet environment. I found that thankfully I didn't accidentally muffle those speakers when I was gaming with my hand flesh. The clarity is okay, but as always I would recommend using some headphones for the ultimate immersive experience. And of course a gaming phone wouldn't be much cop if the performance sucked, but thankfully that's not the case here on the Infinix GT10 Pro. It's powered by MediaTek's mid-range Dimensity 8050 chipset, packing that mighty 3GHz Prime Core. That's backed here by 8 gigs of RAM, though it's expandable to 16, just using storage as a kind of a temporary memory dump. And the Dimensity 8050 also boasts MediaTek's capable Mali G77 GPU. So yeah, the GT10 Pro is certainly geared towards gaming. And so I set aside a few hours to really test out the Infinix GT10 Pro's prowess, starting with a good bit of Free Fire action. Now in these battle royale type games, I generally have a life expectancy comparable to a northerner who lives on nothing but a diet of Greg's steak bakes. But hey, I don't know if I was just suddenly having a really great day or if the Infinix GT10 Pro proved to be the ultimate weapon of choice. But I absolutely smashed my way through the very first game. I was murdering fools left, right and centre. Anyone who thought they could sneak up on me was walking away without a head. That footsteps enhancer feature certainly helped to clue me in whenever someone was trying to be a sneaky bugger and get the better of me. And of course I had the graphics quality bumped all the way up to the maximum level so I could clearly see anyone in the distance. Despite boosting those visuals up, the performance stayed absolutely flawless, nice fluid frame rate. Didn't see a single judder or stumble the entire time. And yes, I even bloody won it! The first freaking game, can you believe it? 
As for the second and the third game, well, let's not talk about those. Let's just say the magic powers of the GT10 Pro seem to have waned by then. But next up to really test the Infinix GT10 Pro was a good bit of Genshin action. And once again, just like Free Fire, I boosted the graphics settings up to the max level, stuck it on 60 FPS. Sadly, there's no frame rate booster for Genshin Impact just yet. And I was impressed by just how well that Dimensity 8050 coped. Yes, I certainly did see a couple of major drops in that frame rate when things got absolutely crazy. Lots of wee gribbly things trying to murderize me all at the same time. But these judders were reasonably rare considering this is just a mid-range platform. And I found that the gameplay remained pretty smooth for the most part. And an even better news, I found that the Infinix GT10 Pro didn't heat up too badly at all even when I was gaming for over an hour on this thing. It certainly gets warm but I wouldn't say it was particularly toasty and I certainly didn't notice any throttle into that performance. And if you do want to charge up the Infinix GT10 Pro while you are gaming there is a bypass battery option hidden away in the settings so that can help keep the phone cool as well. You've got both 5G and Wi-Fi 6 support for getting online. I certainly didn't notice any issues with the networking when I was just on my Wi-Fi playing a bit of again that Free Fire and that Genshin which have to stay connected at all times. And good news if you do want to do a lot of gaming on this thing because you've got a 5000 mAh capacity battery and the drain is surprisingly good considering I was doing Genshin, Free Fire, all this good stuff. You'll certainly be able to get several hours of Free Fire action on the go. Genshin Impact does drain it a bit faster but not too terribly. And if you are running a bit low on juice well the Infinix GT10 Pro supports 45 watt charging so it's not too tediously slow. No wireless charging support however. And now let's check out the Infinix GT10 Pro's camera tech spearheaded by a 108 megapixel mega bastard with the usual obligatory macro and depth sensors chucked on there as well. When it comes to the camera tech on gaming smartphones it's generally a good idea to lower your expectations because they're usually functional at best. As you can see you do have a good bit of eye tracking to at least keep your subject nice and sharp and in focus. You've also got a 108 megapixel mode if you want to shoot at that maximum resolution to crop in later. And of course you've got those AI smarts which can change up the camera mode to suit your subject. You've got quite a wide variety of different bonus modes including the obligatory beauty mode, you've got the portrait mode, super night mode if you're trying to shoot in a low light environment and of course plenty of other bits as well, lots of different features to play around with. For your video shenanigans, while well, you can shoot it up to 4K resolution at 30 FPS and then if we flip around to the front you've got a 32 megapixel selfie shooter and apparently you've got a dual front face and flash as well. Oh yeah, that's pretty bloody bright. And if you want to shoot video with that front facing camera or just a bit of Teams and Skype and Zoom and whatever else, you can capture up to 2K resolution footage. And the mic seem to do a pretty decent job of picking up your voice, even if you're holding the phone at arm's length. And there you have it, that in a lovely wee nutshell is the fresh new Infinix GT10 Pro gaming smartphone which packs quite a punch thanks to that MediaTek Dimensity 8050 chipset. Decent battery life and while you don't have dedicated shoulder buttons or any of the features you find on more expensive gaming smartphones, certainly for a more budgety price this will do the job for your Free Fires, your PUBGs, whatever you're into. So that's what I reckon of the Infinix GT10 Pro. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pause, subscribe, ding that notifications bell, blah, blah, blah. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.